Hello guys and guyettes, and welcome back to another tutorial here on Tuesday. Um, today is a very, very highly requested video from many of you, um, being intro makers or uh, graphic design, motion graphics, entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call yourselves. Um, a lot of you guys have asked how to add shockwave sort of effects or assets to um, motion graphics kind of like how I have with my intro and um, kind of like I've incorporated into pretty much any uh, current YouTube intro that I've made for anyone. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, um, I don't really do this enough, but I, I want to go ahead and show a few examples before I start the actual tutorial to kind of give you a better idea of sort of the outcome effect and how it can work into your projects. So uh, pretty much here I have the intro that I made for Minecraft Universe or Jason. Um, pretty much, I, it incorporates a lot of things, but if you look closely at the end, I do incorporate the nice shockwave effect behind his title, and um, it, it gives you a good idea of uh, where you would use something like this. So I don't know if you guys caught it there, but you could definitely see the whole shockwave effect behind his title. And it just, it kept the intro from looking stale at the end with just some bouncing text and, you know, that's it. So, it can liven up a static scene in your intro if you're having um, issues with something looking just too plain at the end. You can, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for you to throw in a shockwave, maybe look, make it look better and um, all that good stuff. I can also show you an example of um, the intro I made for No Boom Gaming. And that was pretty much uh, the same deal. I usually I usually use it on um, sort of uh, credits slash their name. Um, it just keeps that whole end slate with their title fresh and interesting without it being too short where you don't have time to read it. It keeps it interesting long enough where you want to display their logo and all that sort of stuff. So. I don't know, uh, it could be used for a lot more than just going behind some text, but that's mainly what I use it for, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Um, you can use it to put behind almost anything. I mean, it, just use your imagination, guys. I'm just showing you the effect. You can go ahead and take it and do whatever you want with it. Um, but uh, what I usually do is putting it behind text to keep it, you know, from looking too static. So, pretty much what I have in my intro is I have my name. I have it, um, if you guys weren't here for last week's tutorial, I pretty much showed how to make this. It is the overlay intro tutorial, so if you have not watched that, go make sure to catch it before you watch this one, but pretty much what I have is some text coming down and bouncing in, bouncing in, and I have a nice, um, shadow behind it, and all that good stuff. It will overlay on top of any, uh, normal video you have, um, so, yeah, pretty much I'm gonna, I'm going to incorporate a nice shockwave when it hits, when it first hits here, and um, I would have done it um, periodically throughout the duration of this intro if it did do a nice um, screen pump, if it did any of the screen pumping action, I would um, I would go ahead and um, animate that as well, but since it doesn't have any screen pumping during the actual, you know, majority of it, I'm just going to put the shockwave behind the first little bit here when it first makes impact. So. Pretty much it is an asset that uh, unfortunately I could not find the creator's video to anymore. It's either been buried in YouTube or he's taken the video down. Uh, fortunately I do have the asset files here on my computer, although I do 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 <laughs> I want to give credits to the guy who actually formulated and or put together this shockwave pack. Um, I, I, I use it a lot and I really want to credit him but I can't seem to find his video so um, the, the the pack is called shockwave pack by Halesey H-A-L-E-S-E-Y and um, pretty much it has all these shockwaves in it um, if you are watching uh, message me and I will go ahead and give you due credits but anyways here we have our shockwave it's basically a video so I'm gonna go and going to drag it over the composition button right here and that's going to put it into its own comp composition with matching um, resolution and matching frame rate and all that stuff and you'll see 
that it's just this simple shockwave right here and um, you know I wish it were this simple as just dragging it in and putting it in but there is a little bit of work required to you know get it in our scene perfectly one of the ways you can do this is actually if you guys see uh, if I go over to ooh, that is my actual intro I'm not gonna show you guys that for too long um, so this is the one we're working on um, you could just, um, I'm going to drag the composition, not the actual source file, because we're going to be doing some work inside of this composition we want it to update. So I'm going to drag the composition that I made in uh, behind everything. I'm not going to put it behind the shadow. I'm going to put it between the shadow and the logo. And, uh, you know, scale it up, do all that stuff. I'm going to hold shift while I'm scaling to keep the aspect ratio. And uh, if we take a look at it now, be like, oh, great, the shockwave's coming out, you know. I'm done, right? No. Um, as you guys can obviously see, there is a black background associated with it, and this comes into a, a very big point of contention when you are making an overlay intro, because you lose that overlay aspect of it. You've just now got a black background. You're like, well, shoot, I, I can't use this uh, shockwave effect for an overlay intro. Well. That's where I'm here to prove you wrong, as you could probably see from my intro. I have the overlay in it, and um, it does have the shockwave effect. Now, pretty much what we're going to be doing is, um, I'm just gonna make sure I have transparency, yeah. Um, if you guys don't see transparency in your composition, click this little toggle right here. It'll show it. Um, when it looks like this, that doesn't mean that there's no transparency. It just means you've turned off showing it. So let's go ahead and show it. and. Um, we'll see that the black background is still here. Now, this uh, composition is being nested inside of this one, so any changes we make to this composition will update and apply here because it's using it. So, if we go ahead and uh, pull out a nice linear key effect, linear key, actually not linear key, let's just do a color key. We don't, know, we don't need to use a linear color key, that's for a whole different uh, purpose. So. If we put the color key on, it will basically take out whatever color we select. So right now it's set to blue to take out like blue screens and green screens and stuff like that. But we don't want to take out the blue. We want to keep the blue, but we want to take out the black. So if I go ahead and click the black, you'll see it takes out most of it, but it looks very, very yucky and uh, just general not goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and play with these controls here. We have the uh, color tolerance. Uh, don't worry about the color. The color is going to look bad right now. But what I'm going to worry about is how it looks. And uh, don't spend too much time worrying too much because we're going to um, fiddle with these two values down below here, making it look a little bit nicer. Notice how it kind of looks all pixelated and stuff. We're going to we're gonna jack up the feather and stuff like that to make it look nicer. But what I'm going to do is just get it to where it gets, um, gets rid of most of the black but leaves the particles of the shockwave. You'll see if I do it right here, it's a lot of black artifacting. If I do it right here, it takes up too much of it. So we have to find a nice medium where we get as many um, shockwave particles as we can, but we don't get that black artifacting as you see right here. So I'll go ahead and go right about here. It's about 31 if you want to use the same value for yours. And um, now we want to get rid of the blockiness of it. So if I go here to um, Edge Feather, I can uh, turn up the feather to kind of ease it a little bit better, make it a little bit easier on the eye here. I'm going to go to about 0.3 pixels here, and um, that looks about good. You can also thin the edge a little bit, or you can go negative to include more of that black, or you can go positive to kind of cut into it. but. I don't think the edge thin should be adjusted for this use because it's either going to take away the particles, particles completely or involve um, part of the black background because the particles are so small we don't have room to thin anything or add anything. So pretty much that's what the color key does. It gets rid of that black background and uh, basically separates your shockwave from your actual footage. So what we can actually do now is actually start toying with this and um, creating uh, more out of it. Right now it looks kind of dark, so if we go back to the comp it's being used in, I mean, it looks okay, but it doesn't look that great. It, it looks like just blue and then yuck. Um, so what we should do is add um, hue and saturation. Hue and saturation. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it on here. And what we can actually do is click the colorize tab here 
and uh, we can play with um, the saturation so we can bring up the color if we want it to be black shockwave that, that's a cool effect we can also bring up the lightness to make it like a white shockwave which would look really cool let's actually take a look at how that looks yeah it looks kind of cool a white shockwave just get rid of um get rid of all the saturation and turn up the lightness we're gonna play around with the timing of the shockwave and the speed of the shockwave a little bit later but you can kind of see when i'm scrubbing through um, the sort of effect it gives. So you're going to want to keep eyes on both of these compositions to kind of see the progress in real time and kind of aim for what you want here. So I'm going to not have it be white, but I'm going to have it be a nice light color. Um, turn my saturation all the way up and then my brightness here. All right, there we go. Um, I'm going to match the orange of my logo. So I'm going to rotate the hue to get that orange. You can rotate it to whatever color you want, but I'm going to rotate it to be orange. And uh, there we go. That is the nice orange we want. Now, if you notice on my intro, there's one last effect. So that would be the glow. And the glow effect is very, very key to kind of giving that nice radiant glowing shockwave look. So if we go ahead and play around with some of these effects here, I usually like to bring my um, radius up to about 30, 38, 40. Um, I like to bring in my glow threshold just a little bit if you turn in too much it'll be uh completely yellow but you want to get that nice yellow tinge on the on the crest of the ripples here so that you can kind of kind of get a differentiation of depth and color and stuff like that and intensity you can change that all you want if you want the glow to be like really intense you might want to turn down the threshold but it gives it a nice look to it I think this is actually a better glow job than I've done on my intro, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's pretty much good. If we go back to our main comp here, you can see the difference of um, see the difference that the glow makes. We'll go ahead and turn it off. Yuck! Turn it back on. Noise. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. That is a nice shockwave effect. And uh, notice how this composition, because we're using it, we're using this composition that we're fiddling around with right here. If we use this actual composition in this other one, it updates in real time. That's one of the things I love about After Effects. And it's one of the unique features that it has compared to most other advanced editors slash compositing software. So here we are. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and play around the timing. I'm going to go to the point of impact, which is actually right here. And I'm going to position my shockwave so that it starts to be um, apparent right when um, our, our logo hits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to quarter quality here so that I don't have to wait for it to render for it to update. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to about right when it starts to show, right here. And I'm going to hit Control alt t on my keyboard, or I'm going to right-click and go to Time, Enable Time Remapping. They both do the same thing. I just like using the keyboard shortcut because it's nicer. And um, that's going to create a keyframe right there. I'm going to go to where the shockwave ends. Shockwave ends, give or take, right about here. You want to go a little bit past where it ends. And I'm going to create another keyframe. That's basically going to say, I want the video to be at this point in time, right where this keyframe is. So if I squish them together, it'll make those, it'll make everything that happens happen within these two periods of time, which is closer together. So it'll happen faster. If I stretch it out past where I created it, it'll make it go slower because it's stretching that time between those two points that I specified into a longer duration of time. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink these together to make the shockwave happen a lot faster and I might want to go a little bit out there um, it does look yucky right now but I'm gonna go ahead and ram preview all right so that looks like it did the trick it actually does look a little bit fast and by a little bit I mean a lot fast so you just want to play around with the time re remapping and just get it right so it needs to be about like tw twice as long here let's go ram preview all right, let's see how this looks. Ah, that's looking more like it. Notice how it kind of comes out right when it hits. Actually, it looks like it's coming out a little bit after it hits. 
So it hits right here. And then it waits between these two frames that kind of really become apparent. So I'm going to go to right here and I'm just going to drag my shockwave forward. Maybe a little bit more. All right. So here we go. There we are. And uh, that is our shockwave timed all nice and beautiful with our logo smashing. I think it looks really great and the glow is one of the final touches that not a lot of people actually put in the effort to do. But it just goes that extra mile and it shows you that um, extra work on effects like this really do make a big, big difference. So there's probably a lot more you could do with it, um, just as shown by the example of the glow. You could probably do some other stuff that makes it 100 times better than this. But for the purposes of this tutorial, that looks pretty dang awesome in my eyes. And um, hopefully you guys make use of this tutorial, add this effect to your intros and stuff. I know it's kind of my style, but you know what? You gotta let you gotta let go of your babies sometimes. So <laughs> here you are. This is the effect that I primarily use in my intros, but you guys can now use it for yourselves. And um, looks like I'm gonna have to go search for a new style. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, hopefully this helped you. If it helped you, then make sure to share it with your um, graphic design friends, your friends at school, your grandmother, your your gato, your cat. Um, who knows? Who knows? They might find it very useful, and um, if you found it useful, then I'm sure I'm sure they will as well. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my uh, my graphic store here real quick. So if you uh, are uh, like I don't know allergic to that, please leave. Um, pretty much, I have my own graphic design website. Pretty much, what you do is go and look at some of the designs. If you uh, like one, you can go ahead and customize it. You can change your name. The color of it, you can change subtitles, um, you can add your own Cinema 4D render character to it, and it is all rendered and sent to you within 30 minutes of your order, and that's intros, uh, outros, banners, all that good stuff, and um, you'll have it in your little hot hands in 30 minutes. So I'm really proud of my uh, store and website and all that, so if you want to go check it out, it's uh, gfx.thegarde.com, and um, yeah, go check it out if you're in need of any of those things. All that stuff out of the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if it did help you. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial next Tuesday. All right, see you guys later. Peace.